Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 7, Organic Chemistry. This is video number 12 on the safe handling of hydrocarbons. This particular video is just giving you a very quick overview of the procedures required to safely handle and dispose of organic substances. Now the best way to identify or discuss safety is to actually have a look at some of the information that we are regularly given when we look at our risk assessments. So I hope um, you've had a chance to play with risk assess because it is a, a great program for giving you lots of information very quickly about a range of different compounds. Now safety issues are related to handling and disposal. And we need to make sure that when we're assessing any chemical, we're considering both of these together. It is very possible that you may be asked questions around um, identifying and mitigating risks when you're carrying out chemical uh, procedures. And in order to do that, we need to move away from what we might expect you to know as a year seven student. So wearing safety glasses is something I would expect year seven to be able to tell me. Um, likewise, not drinking chemicals. So therefore, I would expect students in the senior years to have a little bit more specific knowledge. And of course, so will your examiners. In addition to that, there are a range of different organic compounds that we can use to demonstrate a range of different properties, both physical and chemical, but we need to make choices about what we're using in order to ensure that we are maintaining our highest possible levels of safety. In looking at observing reactions involving alkanes and alkenes then, um, one thing is very important. Firstly, the smaller members of each of these groups are gases at room temperature, and therefore they're a little more difficult to study. So we want some longer chain compounds in order for them to at least be liquids at room temperature so we can see what's happening with them in terms of their density, in terms of their solubility, and also in terms of their reactivity. Two compounds which are relatively similar are hexane and cyclohexane. If we were to briefly draw these, then our hexane would look like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, hydrogens at each of these points. Cyclohexane, on the other hand, would look like this. Let's just put a lot of those hydrogens in. Okay, so now all of the hydrogens are in, and you can see both of these two compounds are both alkanes. They both have only single bonds connecting their carbons. They both have six carbons. There is a small difference in the number of hydrogens, and you can see that the hexane is a C6H14 compound, and the cyclohexane is a C6H12 compound. But given the fact that there's only two different hydrogens, is there anything we need to know about these two compounds in terms of safety? Well, a little guide is always uh, one thing that we can look at. So I guess if you see a difference in the fact that hexane is for use only by teachers and cyclohexane can be used by students, that's already telling you that there must be some difference. So can we see anything listed under the uh, dangers or risks associated with these? Well, the potential hazards is a good place for us to go and have a look at. Either way, we have compounds which are highly flammable. So when we're looking at assessing different compounds for their risks, and the fact that both of these are alkanes, they are highly flammable. And therefore, if we're looking at, uh, say, uh, keeping away from naked flames, that would identify both a risk associated with this particular compound and also some sort of procedure that you could carry out in order to minimize the risks associated with using that. The other thing that you, uh, I guess, need to be aware of is that area of disposal. So you can see for both of these, this one says toxic to aquatic life. This one says very toxic to aquatic life. 
So that's telling me straight away, don't throw this down the sink. Don't wash my excess down the sink because that's where it's going to end up. So that means we're going to need to collect the waste from these experiments involving either of these compounds and we're going to have to dispose of them separately. We're going to have to, usually we collect them with uh, a range of other organic compounds for disposal. And that's because we can't just empty these down the sink. So there are some, some really useful pieces of information when you start looking at these safety data sheets, which is what SDSs are. They tell us a lot of information about handling, what sort of things we should do. In fact, the first safety measure that you could identify is substitute cyclohexane for, cycl for uh, hexane in an experiment because you can still see the reactions that are occurring with an alkane but you have significantly reduced the uh, risks associated with using these chemicals because you've chosen the safer chemical. So you can see the toxicity that's identified for hexane is not present and therefore we've already mitigated some of the risks just by not using that particular one. Um, there is a, an issue with inhaling the vapors for hexane and so you can see right here in the safety or handling procedures that they actually suggest with cyclohexane that it is a less toxic substitute for hexane or for aromatic solvents. Now, aromatic solvents is another group that we're not looking at today, so we won't worry about those. Um, but certainly if we were going to choose hexane, the fact that we've chosen cyclohexane instead means we're already dealing with something that is less toxic. Try and get into the habit with each of the chemicals that you look at to at least have a bit of a look at the safety issues around handling and disposal for them because when you're assessing risks the more specific you can be about the chemicals you're using the better the quality of your answer thanks for watching